Good day, folks. I hope this is finding you uh, in a good, having a good day, good week. And uh, but we're out here today. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, caring for your pressure cookers. And I shared the other day on a video where we purchased some a seal and uh, a gauge to uh, repair a cooker with. And I have one here. Uh, We've had it on storage for some time, and I apologize for this wind. I hope it's not a problem. I'll try to speak as loud as I can. But we've had one on storage for some time, and the problem was it was the gauge had went bad. And I began to take it apart uh, and pull the gasket, the seal, and the lid. I pulled it out. And it's really not that bad a shape, so, but I'm still going to replace it. But I'm not going to throw away the one that I took out. I have it right here. And I've seen them a whole lot worse than that. It is stained a little bit. So what I'm going to do, but I noticed it's got a, like some, it's collecting some mineral deposits, limestone, whatever, calcium that may be in the water. But I'm going to just soak it down in this water. I've got me a tub here. And I have uh, some just regular Dawn dish detergent. But I did also put a little bit of uh, Arm & Hammer washing soda in it. Because our water here is real loaded with limestone and calcium and I don't know what and all else. But it's loaded with minerals. And... I've not said anything about this, but when I can, when my wife cans, we don't use this water here for canning because it leaves our jars, it leaves a white film on them. And it is very salty as well. So I wonder if whoever drilled this well didn't drill it in a salt mine. But anyway, I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. And uh, we're going to clean this, try to clean this up. And uh, let me spin the camera around for just a second. I'm trying to look at my phone, too. I've got to learn how to use all that. But uh, as you can see, this is the setup I've got here. This is the old cooker. And it is dark on the inside over years of use. But that's not a problem. Now, I will say this. In the pressure cooker manual, there's a recipe in there for... I think it's one tablespoon of cream of tartar to one quart of water. That's the ratio that they recommend. And I thought I had some. Evidently, I've, I'm out of it. But I have did that before, and it will actually make the inside of this cooker, it will actually gleam just like brand new. I mean, it takes all of the darkness out of the metal. And, of course, I know aluminum's technically not classified as a metal but uh, you know what I'm saying but I have actually took that solution boiled it inside the cooker and I've took parts to my smaller ones and dipped them in it as well while it was cooking and it will clean those up on the inside and outside now what I've done I've took a heavy solution of that and boil it just as hard as I can pour it in this tub and then dip these in it I've did that in years past I haven't done that in a while but if you see right here well it fell on me but it's got a lot of build up right here I need to clean all that out I've got me a brush handy so I can do that but on the lid let me show you the lid over here this is very important if you can see around this edge right here, that needs to be good and clean because that has something to do, that, that is your sealing edge. Also, on the cooker, right around this lip, it's got a bevel to it. That's your sealing edge, and you want that real clean. Another thing, you want to be careful about this. You don't want to take a utensil, and especially a metal one, and bang against that because you can damage your seal because that rubber ring actually seals right around that 
lip there. So that's very important. But we're going to get started here. I'm going to clean this up. And uh, then we're going to see if we cannot install a new uh, seal in that lid and get the gauge on it. And we'll be ready to go. Another thing, I'm going to replace this. This thing here has had it. It's seen better days. And I've looked at a couple online. I don't think Presto offers a replacement basket. If they do, I've not found it. But if any of you guys have any ideas, I've looked at a couple. Uh, I think I saw one, Williams Sonoma Hardware. I think that's it's a hardware, I'm not sure. They have a stainless steel. It's like $15, I think. Uh, and I'd love a stainless steel because I'd not have to worry about that no more. But if any of y'all have any ideas on that, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. I, I would love to know about that. And also, on this lid, as you can see, the uh, handle was damaged. So I've got to try to find one of those over the winter. It's not a something that needs to be done right this moment. But I've got to find a handle to go back on here. But we're going to clean this up. And I'm going to set you on the tripod here. And it's a beautiful day outside. So let me get the camera situated here. And we're going to try to clean this thing up. Get it back in use. I've got just a little bit of baking soda that I can use too if I need to. biggest thing is getting this thing soaked down and letting it soak because that will help that come loose and I'll show you something else here that I've did in the past I need me a towel out here if you can see the top of that or well that's the bottom but if you can see that I've used this cooker on a wood cook stove years ago and uh, that's why all that blacks on there Let's try something here. This is just a little baking soda. And this is Barkeeper's Friend. I don't know how this will work. We're going to try it. He's bringing some of it off. That's the thing about this old stuff like this. It was made to repair. And overhaul, whatever. And then keep right on going with it. A lot of the newer items we get today is not made for this folks we're living in a throwaway society okay i'm gonna put you on pause we'll come back in just a few moments folks i'll tell you this a good item to keep on your homestead if you're into uh prepping and survival is baking soda has a thousand and one uses uh, don't cure everything but it is a good item to have uh, for cleaning especially but uh, this inside is a mess on this thing but I'm gonna try to get it as good as I can I make me a paste with this and also steel wool is another good item to have I'm gonna try to see if we can this is the worst part of cleaning right here is this around these locks 
and I take a brush and go in and you may have to do this two or three times but this is something that we do every end of the season when we are done with canning for a while you want to clean your cookers up good and get them ready to store now I'll be using some more later on but not like I have over the summer but what we will do we may can some uh, greens we may can some deer meat so that'll be some things that we'll do in the summer but this is a neat little way to clean the grooves with on it so I thought I'd show you that so I'm gonna finish scrubbing on this thing and then I'm gonna get to the lid so I'll catch you then it's it's not perfect but if I really wanted to I could like I say I could clean this with the uh, prima tartar solution and if I really wanted to on this I could buff this back out and I've did that before but I don't have the equipment to do that today but anyway I'm gonna set this over here in the Sun let it dry beautiful day to be outside doing this don't make a mess in the house All right. All right, now we're going to see what we can do with this lid. And I, I'm probably just going to let this soak for a little bit. Kind of break some of the stuff up a little bit in there. Feels like a little bit of oil on it. And something else I have learned, I'll say this. I did this in the past. And... Recently, I've learned it's probably the worst thing you could do to a pressure cooker, and that's put oil on your uh, seals. Because what it actually does, it will cause them to swell, and they'll actually break down. So it's better to make sure they're clean and make sure they're dry when you store them and uh, when you put them away. But putting the we've used you know shortening cooking oil things of that nature on them and that's really not a good idea to do that because that will over time it breaks down it actually it takes life off of your seals so and that other seal in there i don't believe has had that on it and it feels like it's in good shape so uh, but i've got a new one that i'm gonna put on it like that yeah it's in here so I think what I'll do is just take and try to clean it a little bit and like I say this one may get me out of a bind if I have one to break down in the middle of the season and I can't find one nowhere this one may be my salvation so, no, we'll see. But I'm going to rinse this one off and I'll put it back in the box over there. I've got the other one in the house. I don't want it sitting in the sun out here. This is the gray material, which was the better, longer lasting seals. Now everything's the black. But. That's 
that very well could be the original one that was in that cooker. All right. I did want to say that I was very impressed with the package that Presto put that gauge in. It comes uh, closed up in a car, uh, styrofoam container and they put it up to protect it. Even though it's not made in this country no more, I'm still impressed with that. So I'm not going to put that on this jet. I'm going to wait till I get the seal in. Now I've done use, I've done put the uh, pop off get, get, uh, seal right here, and uh, I've got my rubber seal that goes around here that we're going to put on next. But I did want to say something. If you ever heard the old saying where the rubber meets the road, well, this is where the rubber meets the pressure cooker. And this is a little bit of a challenge. It goes in. The bigger cookers work a lot easier than the smaller ones. But uh, it can be done. And it starts off pretty easy, but it ends up kind of snug. So but we will get it. Another thing, when you're cleaning these things, make sure that this little groove right around here I don't know if you can see it but that little groove right around there you want to make sure let me get my little screwdriver here be sure you see what I'm talking about but this little groove right here you want to make sure it is clean and free of any kind of trash or anything that might be inside of it but I hope this camera's picking me up Now I can see what I'm doing with my phone over it. But as you can see, folks, it looks like this thing's going to be too big. Do not cut this seal. It's not too big. That's the way it's designed. And you've got to sit here and fudge it. And really what you're going to do, you're going to stretch it in place. And what you've got to do, you've actually got to pull back that way and pull back this way so that you can get this to fall in. So I'm going to sit and work on that. And uh, when I get, get it done, I'll show you. Okay. It's in. It didn't really take me no time. I popped it right in place. But that seal is in, and you're good to go. Now we're going to put the gauge on, and I hope I don't have no uh, malfunctions doing that. Bring you over here. We move this out of the way. Move this out of the way. And everybody is getting up their leaves, cleaning up their yard, with exception of me. And I probably need to go find me a wrench to tighten that down with. But that's all that is right there that this screws in. I didn't realize they were actually two different ones of these. No. Oh. All right, I'll get a wrench and tighten that up. The only thing I will say, there's no instructions. Or it says if you've got uh, instructions, consult your book. So I guess that's the way they do it. They save the money and they don't uh, print new instructions. So I guess that's how they save their money. So anyway, I'm going to get a wrench and I'll tighten that down. And this cooker should be ready to go with exception of the handle. And I don't think I, I can look around. I don't think I have any spare laying around nowhere. I might, but don't know where it would be. But that might be something I'll work on this winter is trying to get a rack 
and to get a handle for this thing. But we may use it in the meantime. Uh, and I can take the handle off of the other one down there if I need to. But I may use it to try it out to see that it's going to work when we can our greens. And like I say, we may can some deer meat. We'll probably do the deer meat before we'll do the greens if truth's known. It just depends on which comes first. But anyway, folks, that's just some basic maintenance on a Presto pressure canner. The older models. So I hope we've showed you something today that will be a help. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you have any ideas of any other videos you'd like to see me attempt to do, feel free to leave me that. Uh, I'm not afraid of trying nothing if I feel like it's something that I can do. And so we would love to, uh, you know, have ideas of things we can do. Now, I've not run out of nothing. It's just that weather and certain things like that kind of affecting what I can do right now. But uh, this is a perfect day for something like this. So anyway, I appreciate you watching and uh, appreciate all of you that have subscribed to my channel. And uh, I know we've had several new ones to come on board lately. So we really appreciate that. And so I'm going to get off of here and I'm going to finish this up. And I hope y'all have a blessed day. Thank you.